afternoon. Joe Denley is out of there. Well done, Smith, for showing some cojones and for dropping uh, Joe Denley. Um, I'm glad to see that that's happened. Uh, but not too many pats on the back, Josh, if you had, because you kept with Josh Butler, didn't you? You stuck with your, your man, Butler. But anyway, we'll get to that a bit later. Um, guys, you are with Shay here. Uneven Bound Top, you guys are well. Um, so yeah, the um, second test squad for England just been announced. Well, a few hours ago now, it's about 11 o'clock on Wednesday evening. I've uh, got the, on the eve of the second test, which happens tomorrow in Manchester, Old Trafford, uh, between England and the West Indies. Looking forward to it, of course, especially after what happened in the first test. Makes it very interesting for what happens tomorrow. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get into it. So as I said before, Jordan Lee's been dropped. I think, obviously, the state of execution was um, quite protracted now. A lot of kind of... I wouldn't say polarised opinion, but there is a fairly hefty vocal minority that supports Joe Denley and his position in the team uh, for his kind of role in what I like to call ball eating. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I find it a bit shocking really that we value a guy who averages less than 30 because he can block out a game. It's down to the fallacy of the batsman around him that has made him seem this important player in the team. The reality is, any team that has serious aspirations of being the best team, test team in the world, does not accept a less than 30 average number three. You just don't. It's simple as that. I don't give a shit how many balls this guy faces. It doesn't matter to me. Um, the other people need to work on their game in order to make sure they're, they're playing the right way for the situation that they're presented with. It's not a case of Joe Denny comes in and to, um, takes pressure off the rest of the bats around him by basically ball eating. I, I don't agree with that whatsoever. Your, your batsmen, your top order bats in particular, need to make runs. It's simple as that. Especially number three. It's a key player in any team. It's a gone player on your side. So, um, I'm all for Joe being dropped. I did say on here previously, months ago, that I understood his value to a certain extent because of his age. But, that being said, since then, he's continually failed. Um and there's time for him to go. Um, Joe Root and Ben Stokes at top five are vastly experienced players now. So you have that. Roy Burns a very established first-class player. And I think he's there to stay. Um, so I think that the top five is still fairly solid there anyway, with Sibley and obviously Crawley to make up those five players. Um, and I think it would be just fine. It would have been an absolute travesty if Crawley got the boots and he was stuck with Denley um, because of Ed Smith's dare I say, it's almost uh, ignorant to a certain extent. I'm searching for a better word, to be honest with you, but the stubbornness, I think that's what I should be saying, the stubbornness of of Ed Smith. I mean, going to that, obviously, he's gone with Josh Butler again for this test. And I think Josh Butler, I can understand that a little bit more. I know there's a lot of people clamouring for his um, position to be taken by Ben Folks, and I get that. I'm a sorry fan. You know, I'd love him to be in the team. But... I did say prior to the series that I think Butler will get two tests, and I think he will, and I think that fails again that he'll be done away with. Now, the only problem with that is if he makes runs, let's say he makes a 50 in this one of the two innings and he retains place for the third test. The reality is, will Josh Butler go on to be a consistent run scorer at test level? So, you know, there's this all talk about like Josh Butler should be playing like Alan Gilchrist. Now, for me, I've mentioned before in previous videos, a recent video actually, that you're going to play him, let him play like Gilchrist, but the problem is, said before as well, Gilchrist had, um, a, you know, wonderful batsmen in front of him in that great Australian test team of that era. He had people like, you know, Steve Walsh in his career, um, um, Matthew Hayden, Justin Langer, Ricky Ponting, Matthew, you know, Michael Clark, you know, toward, towards the end of Gilchrist's career, um, Damien Martin. He had some great batsmen in front of him playing in a wonderful side where he was allowed to flourish and play the way he wants to play his natural game, whereas Josh Butler hasn't anywhere, had, had anywhere near the quality above him, the likes of Jason Roy, Johnny Best over the top three, um, and the retirement of Cook, who was obviously one of the best players that England have ever produced. Um, they've had, you know, he's had, the likes of obviously Ollie Pope, a debutant, uh, Zach Crawley, again, another debutant, Dominic Sibley, another debutant, Roy Burns, another debutant, uh, Joe Denley, he's not had that, that kind of probably feeling where he thinks he needs to play his natural game because the top six are failing pretty much every other test. So 
it's, you know, I'd love him to play like Gail Chris. I, I think if he's going to play, he should play that. But then the problem is that he's going to face is that he'll be considered reckless if he gets out for, you know, eight off 11 balls, you know, or eight off seven balls or whatever, you know. Um, so I think that, yeah, Josh Butler, I think, is um, he's trying to take ground, let's be honest. And I think one more failure, and there's you know two more failures in, these, in this next match, and he'll be gone. I think Fox will come back in for the third test. Um, apart from that, obviously, we've got, um, three changes. So you've got Root back in for Denley. You've got Anderson, Wood, both out. Um, James Anderson and Mark Wood have both been uh, rested, which I think is the right thing to do. Um, Jim Anderson have played about to back test matches since South Africa and obviously broke down in that second test. Mark Wood, we know he's quite fragile. Um, it's been quite well documented that his bowling action still puts a lot of strain on his ankles, uh, well, his, his front ankle, um, despite the short of run up. So I think you need to keep him wrapped in cotton wool um, and then you've obviously got um, coming in to the squad anyway you've got Robinson and Sam Curran I think we'll see uh, Chris Wilkes and uh, Stuart Broad uh, resurgent Stuart Broad coming back to the team a lot has been said about that the fact that he was dropped for the first test I think he would have played obviously it didn't happen he's a very proud guy big ego in my opinion massive ego to be honest and he would have been quite hurt by being dropped after he did so well last year against Australia I think very well in South Africa, um, I think he should play the first test, but he didn't. I don't think it was such a big deal because Wood performed very well in SA as well. Uh, Joffre Archer is a fantastic bowler and it's fully fit again. You could argue maybe Broad coming for Archer, but okay, they went with Archer, um, who bowled magnificently in that second innings. Um, but that's where it is. Stuart Broad didn't, didn't play. He'll get his chance now. He's going to be on fire, I think. I think he's got a lot to prove. Because, like I said before, a bruised ego ends a big one of that. And I think he'll do well in this test match. So let's see. Um, interesting to see Ollie Robinson liking his kind of drip feeding into his into the setup. I think he eventually will get a game. He might get a game across these two series against West Indies and Pakistan. I'll have to wait and see. I think Sam Curran will definitely get a game at some point. Um, so, yeah, I think that's good to get those, those guys back in. Um, and I think Dominic Best... We'll obviously play, best will play, we'll turn it or Trafford. And I think it'll be a good side. I actually think, and I'll get to, actually, I'll mention this point in my summary of this test match. But anyway, um, let's go to the West Indies um, and yeah, go on with them. And I think, I really actually quite like what is coming out of the West Indies camp. Phil Simmons, Jason Holder, I saw, you know, kind of uh, pre match interviews with them today. And I'm, I've heard a lot as well about the fact that the West Indies are training really hard. They're still really focused. They're not getting ahead of themselves. They're here to win. They're here to win this series. And I have to say, they've been superbly led by Simmons and Holder. Um, and what's come out the camp seems to be, from what I can see, what I've been hearing, is that they are really fully focused at task in hand. And uh, they're keen to topple England, which is no mean feat, especially in England. India couldn't do it. Australia, despite retaining the ashes, couldn't do it. Very few teams come here and actually win England. Um, so... And as I said, India, you know, regard the best team in the world, you would say overall on paper, they they got here. I mean, it was a very close series despite the four one score line, um, but they lost four one, they lost four one. So, you know, West Indies have, have have done really well to you know get a, you know to win the first test and get a, a lead in the series, and I think they're going to probably go in and change. I mean, the question is to here like someone like Shine Gabriel, obviously took now wicket to the match, took five for the second innings, but really well across the match, Jason Holder as well. I mean, I go back to start with Gabriel. Gabriel's the kind of guy, obviously was injured, part of reserves, brought in when he proves fitness. Is he the kind of guy who can go back to our test matches? I'm not sure. He's got quite a, a very stocky, kind of muscular frame. And I don't think that's actually, uh, that frame is built. It's probably a natural frame, but it's not really built for, you know, for the wear and tear of test match cricket as a fast bowler, you know, week in, week out, if it's back to back test matches. So I wonder if how he'll go. If I was Phil Simmons and Jason Holder, I would go to him to listen, mate, just give me five more days. Just give me five more days, so the, the best you can, you know, best you've got, run into the ground for me, mate, and then let's get that series up to our belt, let's win it, and then you can rest for the third test, you can put your feet up. You know, so that's what I would go. Obviously, there's comments of Shea Hope, if it's, um, if he's going to get, um, picked again. I think he will get another opportunity. I think he will, uh, despite his really, really poor record the last 18 months. Uh, maybe Sharp Shamarbrox can go to three, he can go down to four. I think they'll probably go and change and keep Sharp up at three. Um, and hopefully he can rekindle some of the form that he showed three years ago, although it was a long time ago, but let's see. Um, Jermaine Black would obviously prove a lot in the 95. 
Um, Dal Richard really well. People talk about his 60 yard in the first innings, but his second innings, that 20 yard, he scored at a reasonable pace as well. That was crucial because they were just teetering a little bit. If Dal Richard got out, you know, quickly, they might put a lot more pressure, you know, on the West Indies there. But he stuck around for a while. Obviously, they saw the game home. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I do think West Indies probably got changed. If they're gonna bring in Raheem Cornwall, I think that Osori Joseph will make way. It's just a question is if Gabriel can perform, I think, because I think Roach will be fine, Hold will be fine, but it's whether Gabriel's fine because this will come this is what I want to get to before I mentioned. This series might come down to the bench strength. It's almost like the squad as opposed to a team. England have far better players you would say to come into the side even though they've lost a test match they're making changes you could argue it's a stronger side if they bring in Wokes and Broad with their records in England and they bring in Root for Denley that's a massive difference straight away England that's stronger even though West Indies have won the test and stay unchanged you could argue that West Indies are going to be weaker because it's back to back, to back, to back test matches with the same team with the issues I mentioned with people like Gabriel who's a key part of that fastball unit but been injured, can he go back to back test matches? Well, I won't see. And I think that if this bench strength might actually be the reason why England can still nick the series. Because they can, the place they're bringing in, it, the, the team is strengthened, in fact. Um, even with the bowling, with Wood and Anderson out, but Broad and Wilkes in, you could argue that's a stronger twosome than Anderson and Wood. So it all seems silly because. They didn't blindly play the first test. But I think for quite obvious reasons of Jimmy Anderson, obviously, um, being the ball that he is, Jimmy Anderson, I mean, his reputation precedes himself, doesn't it? Um, Mark Wood obviously did very well in South Africa. But Wokes and Broad are incredibly good at home. And obviously, Wokes shows up the batting as well. You know, he's a, he's a far better batsman than Wood or Anderson. So the batting is immediately strengthened. Dominic Best calls at nine. Arch made a few runs. He's not all around about any stretch of imagination, irrespective of what he's done at first class level. He can hold about a little bit. But Archer at 10 is okay. And then Broad at 11. You know, it's it just seems a bit more solid, the team. And we're rooting in there for Denley. English look a lot more, I think, all round a better team uh, than they had the last time. And I think they're a better team than West Indies. I still believe that. Um, they may be taking West Indies a bit too lightly, but I don't think it will happen now. Um, ben Stokes can concentrate fully on the game. He obviously took the most amount of wickets and runs in this match, um, in the first test. And I think now he can just continue to flourish. And he'll obviously lead uh, without being the official captain, but I think that obviously he can probably focus on his game again now with Joe Root taking the arm man back. So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. As I said, I think West Indies will go unchanged. He might make one change. He might bring in Cornwall for Joseph, and that'll be interesting to see. But we don't know what Cornwall's about. I mean, how's he going to fare in England? We don't know. You know, he's um, performed okay against India. Did obviously very well against Afghanistan, but it was Afghanistan, all due respect. How will he go in England in the conditions that Manchester will serve up? I guess we'll find out tomorrow. So, guys, anyway, that's pretty much it from me. Um, if you enjoy the content, as always, as I do say, please leave comments below as well. Uh, do like the video, share the video. Anyone you think might find us some interest, you know, enjoyed a bit of cricket, you know, do share the video with them. I really appreciate it. Um, and also subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah.